Hey there! In this video I'll show you how I pack miniature and large model for shipping. Now I'll show you the materials I use and how I securely pack the church and its accessories for shipping. Alright, let's get started. To protect the models, I use bubble wrap and foam wrap. Bubble wrap is ideal for solid plastic models that are less prone to damage. I wrap the model with the bubbles facing the model side and secure it with tape. I also secure the ends with tape to prevent the model from slipping out of the packaging. For solid plastic models, tight packing with bubble wrap is sufficient. Sometimes a single piece of tape is enough. For fragile miniatures, I prefer using 2mm thick foam paper, such as subflooring underlayment from hardware store. It's more cost effective and durable than office supply store alternatives. Foam wrap is unlikely to puncture like bubble wrap. If available, softer 1mm thick foam wrap is even better as it offers more flexibility. I lay the figurine on its side and gently roll it over the foam for wrapping. When packing fragile models with sharp points, I add at least two layers of foam to provide extra protection. This allows for secure stacking without risking damage to the spikes. To ensure the foam stays in place on the fence, I tape both ends of the wrapping. Fortunately, I have the perfect box for stacking the fences. Everything fits perfectly. Securing the cemetery gate is essential, so I find a suitable spot to prevent the other fence section from shifting while ensuring they are not overly tightened. The fence posts are remarkably sturdy, so I simply wrap them in foam and stack them securely in the box. Delicate models like the chapel require extra protection. I safeguard vulnerable sections by adding cardboard pieces, ensuring they are shielded in case of an impact. When it comes to certain models, I don't hesitate to lay on additional foam for added protection. To prevent fragile models like the fences from getting crushed, I put the larger model into a separate box. The tree branches are very fragile, so I begin by wrapping them carefully with bubble wrap.
To ensure complete protection, I cover all parts of the tree with an ample amount of bubble wrap before securely wrapping it in foam wrap. For convenience, I prepare pre-cut tape pieces, temporarily sticking them to the edge of my desk for easy access while my hands are busy. I can then easily grab a piece of tape, even if one of my hands is holding something. Afterwards, I place the tree in a corner of the box, where its fragile branches will be safely oriented during transport. The bell tower spear is fragile, so I start by protecting it with a double layer of foam wrap. Then I wrap the whole bell tower in foam. To ensure optimal safeguarding of the delicate ornaments at each corner of the tower, I utilize two pieces of thick cardboard. The ornaments are now well protected, and I'll further reinforce the spear of the bell tower with additional cardboard. I carefully check the fit of the tower in the shipping box, ensuring it's secure without excessive pressure. Later, I'll add foam inserts to hold the model pieces in place before closing the box. Protecting the roof is a challenge due to the spikes along the ridge. I begin by covering the ornaments with a double layer of foam. I then use foam to secure everything in position since I cannot stick tape on the painted section of the roof. As for the bell tower spear, I use cardboard to safeguard all the spikes. I take my time to ensure each spike is well protected. To prevent any pressure on the spikes, I place foam ribbons to help secure the cardboard in place.
each model has a unique shape and some of them may require ingenuity to protect them adequately. The corners are especially vulnerable and it's best to protect them with several layers of foam. Apologies for the poor shooting of this part of the video. This piece and the next one are rather large and challenging to capture on camera. My main focus is to pack each piece securely and handle them with care to prevent any accidental drops. Among all the pieces, the ceiling is the easiest to pack due to its rigidity. I ensure there is two layers of foam at each corner and that's it. On the other hand, the side wall poses a true challenge as they have many delicate ornaments. I begin by wrapping a double layer of foam around the columns. Next, I cover the base of the wall with foam. The spikes atop the wall are fragile, so I must find an effective method to protect them and to securely hold the foam in place. Subsequently, I safeguard the entire outer surface of the wall with a double layer of foam. However, that's not all. I add more layers of foam to ensure a good coverage of all the corners and ornaments. Once this is done, I tightly wrap everything with a final layer of foam. However, I take care not to wrap it too tightly to avoid any breakage. During transport, this piece will be placed flat in the box, just like this. The front and rear panels are also highly fragile, especially the ornaments surrounding the window. 
Therefore, I begin by protecting these areas with several layers of foam. The same approach is applied to the other side, with a few layers of foam sufficient to safeguard the tip and ornaments above the door. These spears are extremely delicate. They require extra caution and proper protection. To safeguard the ornaments at the front of the wall, I first place a layer of foam. Then I carefully position cardboard over the delicate spears. The same approach is taken for the spears on each side. After adequately protecting all the fragile components, I proceed to wrap the entire wall. As you can see, I use an ample amount of foam wrap to ensure optimal protection. Next, I'll wrap the other side wall and the back panel. Excellent, everything is now securely wrapped. I'll place all the pieces in boxes. Additionally, I'll place the two base boards in bags. This will allow me to determine the space required by all the pieces. Then I'll know how big the transport crate needs to be. It's time to pack everything into boxes. The roof, ceiling and many figurines will fit in the first box. I had extra bubble wrap on top to prevent any movement during transportation. I'll use a box of the same size as a lid. I simply cut the corner of the box to open it up, making it easy to place over the first box. Then, I securely tape the corner of the box. Finally, I reinforce the entire box. However, one of the side walls, once wrapped, is too large to fit into the intended box. To resolve this, I modify the box slightly by adjusting its dimensions to accommodate the piece. By folding the cardboard and with a few scissor cuts, it fits perfectly. So 
subsequently. I prepare a cover and add padding material around the piece to prevent any movement during transit. I carefully place the lid on the box and secure it in position. Additionally, I mark the top side for future reference when I'll be placing the boxes in the wooden crate. While the wooden crate will provide additional protection, I want the boxes to be sturdy. Shipping and handling can be rough, even with well-wrapped models, so I aim to provide the best possible protection. The other side wall is securely wrapped and fit perfectly in the box. There is even some space left to accommodate figurines and other pieces. This is a good thing since there will be a limited space in the wooden crate. I need to restrict myself to using the four large boxes. Therefore, I'll place the figurine and the fence in this large box to eliminate the small box I was planning to use. To ensure the safety of the figurines, I'll place them in small boxes, preventing them from being crushed if the large piece moves. All the remaining small parts will be placed in this box. Fortunately, these parts are not too fragile. I add the final touch, ensuring that every part is well protected. Since the box dimensions have not been altered, installing the cover is easier. I double check that everything is securely packed. Here's the current state of packaging. The two protruding pieces on the right side are the front and back panels of the church. I need to add a lid to secure the parts, even if they protrude outside the box. I will use foam boards to protect the pieces that extend outside the box. These foam boards will act as spacers and the small base panel will be placed on top. The large base panel will be positioned in the wooden crate in this manner. I hope this video has been helpful. In the next episode, I'll talk about the process of designing and building a wooden crate for shipping. Thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, take care.